Hello everyone. Hey bag makers, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. This is my husband Danny and you're watching Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us for Social Sunday. I see everyone chatting in the comments before the show. Um, Danny's been collecting some of those to put on the screen for us. Uh, Barbara is watching from San Jose, California, 102 degrees today. Wow, that's really hot. Tamara from Chicago. Betty's watching from New York. And uh, Renee says hello as well. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, today we're gonna be chatting about a few things and then I'm going to be answering some questions live the second half of the show. So if you have a question for me, you can type your question in the comments at any time. Danny will be collecting comments throughout the show. Um, it can be a bag making related question, question about a notion or tool, general sewing question. Go ahead and type those questions wherever you watch the show, either on Facebook or YouTube. And don't forget, you'll need to be signed into your account in order to leave uh, a comment. So um, a reminder, Michelle Graham is hosting the 100 Pouches in 100 in 100 Days Challenge. That's over in the Facebook group. There's a link um, in the description to that. Uh, we've been seeing tons of pouches because people are trying to keep up. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to have the expectation on yourself of completing all 100 projects, but I think it's a really nice way to get some fun things made uh, for holiday gift giving and um, certainly uh, even a few pouches made for family and friends would be great and you're welcome to participate in the challenge no matter how many your own per personal goal will be for that challenge. Um, next week, next Sunday is our daughter Violet's birthday so rather than being live on the show we're going to, to air a previously recorded show during our regular time slot so there will still be a show being shared at the usual time. It'll just be something we've pre-recorded. Um, unless you watch all the shows, you may have missed the show. We're still deciding which one we'll be posting, so um, that'll be next Sunday. Um, but of course, the Sunday after that, I'll be back with my regularly scheduled content. Um, I have some fun notions, uh, a new bag making book to review next uh, two weeks on Sunday. So a bunch of fun things to share with you, so stay tuned for that. Um, I have been working on the Summer Sampler 2020, which was a weekly quilt along. I fell behind by five blocks. I don't know how I let it get that far behind, but I wanted to share the blocks. I sewed four of them yesterday and then a fifth one this morning. So I guess I'll just hold them up. So my my color scheme is all uh, sort of like a citrus yellow with blues and greens. And some of the blocks have curves like this one. I really like sewing curves, it's fun. I tend to, if, if you're a quilter, I don't know how you usually sew your curves, but I tend to mark the center of uh, the larger piece and also the inset piece, pin the centers, and then also like maybe an inch on one end, the, the end actual area, um, just to get the pieces uh, even together at the ending spot. And then I'll start sewing from the beginning and then of course matching up the middle. And because I have the end already sewn, I don't have to worry about the pieces shifting as I get to the end piece. Um, so anyway, I really like sewing curves. Here's another one with um, some curves in it. Um, this is the one I sewed this morning. This one was a little bit time consuming, but still fun. And then I have one more. So only two more weeks to go, and then I'm going to start putting my blocks together. I'm really excited to see how all the blocks look like with the colors. Um, I sort of had a love-hate relationship with the colors that I chose. Some weeks I really liked the colors, and other weeks I was like, oh, I don't know about the colors. And I had a limited amount of fabrics. Um, I had either two or three for each color, yellow, blue, and green. So some weeks with blacks with lots of different pieces in, it was hard to choose colors so that they would still stand out so that they didn't all blend together. But I think when the quilt is together, I think I'll be pretty pleased with it. So looking forward to finishing that. And I have a few pictures Danny's gonna put on the screen right now. I went out to visit my friend Vanessa's farm on Thursday, so um, I'm, I'm just sharing three pictures of the horses. Here is the horses giving each other uh, a bit of a scratch. And um, so I just go for a couple of hours out to the farm, take my camera, sit in the grass, take pictures. I sit behind the fence, obviously, and it's just really fun to watch the horses interact. and. Um, come to, they come in to see what's going on and then they go back out to the grass to graze a bit and then sometimes they work their way back up. 
um, if they are keeping their hooves crossed that there might be some carrots involved and so um, I had a lot of fun out at the farm thank you very very much Vanessa um, let's see um, Danny's got his pick of the week he's going to be sharing that with you in just a moment um, honestly we haven't been up to all that much we had some rain today um, we've been playing badminton out in the yard because my son William still likes playing badminton um, I actually got a um, escape room in in a box uh, I found this really cool website that shares um, sort of like escape room challenges but something for all ages so uh, murder is not involved it's just a, a heist or a crime and so my son William told me oh you know are you going to talk about the escape room envelope that you got on the on the show tonight and I said well we haven't done it yet so I'd rather talk about it um, when we've done it so I can explain how fun or not it is but I have a good feeling that it's going to be a lot of fun uh, I'm not sure Dan all right uh, Danny's coming back <laughs> All right, so we're going to zoom over to your pick of the week since you're back. All right, uh, well, I'll give you my pick of the week in a second. Sorry, Facebook, for some reason, was having an issue. Uh, I went and manually started. Hopefully, it's it's working on my phone, so I hope it's working for the people that are joining us. A little late from the Facebook community. Sorry about that, but hopefully everything's okay now. Uh, my pick of the week is from Jamie Bennett Brunson. Uh, she made this Park Sling backpack, and I adored the fabric. I love the colors purple and just awesome i just love it great job the pulls the zippers it's so fun up. that those zipper pulls match the part of the fabric with right. the little face um and violet was asking before the show is that small world fabric from disney and i said yeah i think it is it kind of looks like it reminds me of that ride and uh i remember going on that ride as a kid when we went on the ride did you enjoy it or was it yes a i enjoyed pretty much all rides so i went on. Oh, okay good 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 all right at least um, the ones that i remember at least <laughs> All right, we're going to get over to the questions in just a second. Before we do that, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway, and last week's winner was Brenda Muntz. So congratulations to you, Brenda. I've contacted Brenda via, via social media and just waiting to hear back for her mailing address so we can mail off the prize, which was a pack of Soft and Stable, which uh, very exciting prize. Um, I'll have another giveaway at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. And uh, now Danny's going to take it, take it away with some questions. All right, a real quick question. It's not a question, more of a statement. Okay. I know someone mentioned fast in the past. If you in your comments when you write your questions, mm -hmm. you can do all capitals. Um, you can also write a um, maybe a capital Q first. We do have been getting a lot of questions. I saw another, someone mentioned this before in our stream, and I, I should have took their advice. But I saw it in another person's stream, and they do this, and it does seem to. I, I assume because I'm not running their show, so I can't tell you. But it looks like it may be easier to identify questions. I'd like to try that this week if you guys could put a large capital Q in front of your question or maybe all capitalizations. Uh, I know it looks like you're yelling at us, but you won't be. It'll be easier <laughs> for me to identify them quicker. That makes sense. Yeah. We can try so, it out and see yeah, how it works. Yeah, that's right for one on the go. But if you if you already asked a question, that's totally fine. Or if you forget, Danny's yeah. still looking I'm for still the questions. I'm still going to go back and look for them, yeah. Yeah. I just don't see any yet. Okay. Um, so what I've been up to besides those quilt blocks the last few days, uh, I've been working behind the scenes for four, the last four days on, um, some things for the new website. We're still trying to get that back on track. Uh, obviously it's, uh, not been posted yet, but I'm waiting on, um, all of our great new projects to post, uh, new patterns, new videos, new pattern hacks. So we're waiting on the new website. Fingers crossed. It'll be really, really, really soon. Hopefully. Um, and what else do we have going on? I don't know. I've just been really excited working on some new patterns. Uh, Lorraine says Bello, Bello pouch release. Um, that's the, the new pattern I was talking about just a second ago. Uh, we're j honestly, we're just waiting on the new website. I'm a little bit hesitant to release things on the old website in case uh, it makes things more difficult in getting things transferred over to the new website. So we're just waiting on the new website. I know I keep saying that, but I think Charlie took that as verbatim writing a large Q. <laughs> <laughs> um, Charlie says, Sarah, I struggle to throw out scraps of fabric. How do you save them and how small a piece do you save? So uh, being a bag maker, often I have quite large scraps. Um, I used to save them in a couple of hat boxes. And then over the years, I was noticing I wasn't ever using up my scraps. And so I have a friend who does crazy quilting. I sent all my scraps to her a few years ago, um, and I've donated scraps over the years also. Um, if I was more of a prolific quilter, I'd certainly save more scraps and use them up myself. 
Um, however, I just, uh, most of the things I'm sewing are bags or if I'm working on a quilt, I tend to go for solids. And so I, I don't often have scraps of solids from bag making. And so um, I'm definitely not throwing my scraps out. Um, I usually find a friend to send them to or someone who needs them or would like to use them for a project. So I know that really doesn't help, but if you could um, just have a, a plastic container perhaps with a lid and you can throw your scraps in there. I've seen friends of mine that are quilters organize their scraps into different colors. So perhaps uh, plastic storage containers or drawers and each drawer is a different um, color. Um, and then you can quickly dip into the bins or drawers when you're working on a quilt and you would like to pull um, certain colorways together. Holly said, Danny, my husband wants to know your favorite Disney ride. Iron Dwarf Mountain Ride, is that? Um, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. There you go. Is I don't that... know the name of it, but it's by far my <laughs> most favorite one because I feel it's kid friendly as well. And I'm sort of a wimp when it comes to roller coasters. Uh, funny story about that. We were actually at Universal Studios with the Crafty Gemini, some may, may or not know, um, wonderful family. Her husband was gonna go on, I think it was called the Incredible Hulk. And he's like, hey, you wanna come with? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I looked at it, it was like upside down, reverse flip. And the, the poor guy went on his own and uh, you know, I, I gotta give it to him. It was definitely uh, a challenging roller coaster. It looked intimidating as heck. And I'm like, I'm not gonna be the guy that's gonna be throwing, I'd rather just say no, know your limits sometimes. And uh, maybe when I'm there by myself, never, <laughs> I'll do it. but. It, it it scared me. I'm not going to lie. So I'm a low quality coaster, intense. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but something that's easy for kids. It's so funny because I feel like when we were younger, we were more willing to go on these uh, crazy or crazy or outlandish rides like roller coasters, up and down, straight up, straight down. But now Violet like, is like that. Violet loves going yep. on rides like that. I Thank goodness Sarah is willing to do that with her because I am not. <laughs> Um, Michelle said, which ruler did you, did you use to make the curves for your quilt blocks? So those summer sampler quilt blocks with the curves, um, part of the PDF instructions came with the paper templates. And since they were basically just one off blocks, I just used the paper templates. I do have, um, some curve rulers. Um, actually color girl quilts has a really great ruler for cutting out curves. Um, so check her website out color girl quilts. If you're interested in um, adding a ruler for curves to your stash. Uh, Teresa said, what what makes you choose fusible fleece versus foam? Is it only bulk that makes the difference? That's a great question. So I think part of the reasoning behind choosing fleece versus foam would be um, the feel of the finished bag. Um, fusible fleece or thermalam would result in a slouchier bag and the foam generally stands up by itself. So it's a much more structured bag. So it depends on the project that you're using it for. Bulk is also sometimes an issue um, for, let me see, let me grab them. So for my Paladin pouch pattern, this is the large Paladin pouch. Um, the original prototype that I made for this pouch was in foam interfacing and I just thought because it's a smaller project, I thought the foam was a little too substantial for what I was trying to do, especially with the, the smaller boxed corners. And I thought the fusible fleece was good enough. I mean, the, the pouch still stands up by itself, especially if you have things inside of it, it's filled. Um, so I guess I take those things into consideration. Also, if using fusible fleece, um, I can cut it smaller minus the seam allowance um to reduce bulk um, i usually use sew-in foam and so that's not often something that i do with the foam cut it minus the seam allowance but i feel like the fusible fleece worked good with this type of bag um, the difference between the fusible fleece and fusible thermal lamb both of those are products made by pelon the thermal lamb is a needled fleece so it's more similar to um, a dense batting like warm and natural and the fusible fleece is a little bit thinner and airier so um, both will look nice in a finished project but the thermal am just feels a little bit thicker in the finished bag amy says on average do you do a lot of projects or just a few per year that's a really good question so this year i've been pretty good with making a few quilts in past years i was lucky if i made one or two quilts in a year this year I've made several quilts, especially at the beginning of quarantine. Um, this quilt along has been a really fun project because it's just been um, one block every week and it feels like it's easy to keep up with the one block every week. 
Um, I recently purchased a Christmas black quilt. The designer is Kareen Savi, S-O-V-E-Y, and um, I wish I would have brought the pattern pages out so I could share with you. I'll, sh I'll share it with you on another show, but it's a really fun Christmas quilt. I'm going to start that up in a couple weeks. Um, I'm making that one in solids, and it seems like it'll be broken down. Um, she's doing a sew along for the Christmas quilt, and she also has a Halloween quilt coming out. Um, I like the idea of things being broken down with um, easy to manage tasks or bite sized task tasks, which is also what we try to do with the So Sweetness Sew Alongs, break each week down into a manageable task. So um, better chance for more people to complete. Um, Jennifer says, question, what's the weirdest non-sewing tool you have in your sewing room? Um, I'm looking at all my sewing things. Um, I don't know. To be honest, because I need to review so many things on Social Sunday, we, because we've been doing the show for over three years, I do have a lot of strict, strictly sewing related tools. Um, I guess uh, in my previous sewing room, I did have a bamboo chopstick for turning things right side out. But as I now have several turning tools, uh, I, I can't remember the last time I used that bamboo chopstick. So probably I'd probably say that. Ingrid says, how do you determine the size and placement of a zipper pocket? So that's a really great question. When I'm designing a pattern that I'd like to put a zipper pocket into, um, I always take into consideration... Um, first off, um, if regardless if it'll be in the lining or the exterior of the bag to make sure that there's enough clearance from the top edge of the bag so that the zipper is not too close to the top. And also if there's any other extra features in the lining, such as a recessed zipper, I also want to make sure that that's far enough from the recessed zipper so uh, they won't be competing for a similar space. And also I also like to think about um, if heavy things will be placed in the zipper pocket, such as cell phones, wallets, or other items. I want to make sure that the size of the zipper pocket can accommodate um, most of the height of the bag because if a zipper pocket is sort of resting near the bottom of the bag, I feel like it's less chance of the zipper pocket um, kind of pulling down or drooping the lining away. So those are a few things that I think about when I'm thinking about placement for a zipper pocket. Um, clearance from the top keeping away from the recess zipper, magnetic snap, and then making sure it's kind of, uh, when it's finished, it'll be resting near the bottom of the bag. Anne says, could you tell us again uh, what to get, uh, where to get a rivet press? Um, actually, my press was purchased from a shop on Etsy called Minkus Margo. Um, a few people in the Facebook group have purchased rivet presses from other shops. I think Minkus Margo is currently closed uh, for vacation mode on Etsy, um, so not available to purchase items from, but... Um, if you'll check the Soul Sweetness group, um, you can get recommendations from others in the search box in our Soul Sweetness Facebook group. You can type in Rivet Press and you can see all of the previous discussions regarding Rivet Presses as far as where people were buying them from and where else they could recommend. Um, as I only have the one Rivet Press, I can only recommend uh, mine and, and or where I bought it from. Lynn says, due to the bulk of the foam, like soft and stable, I find that my pieces cut with the pattern piece on the fold don't end up quite the same size as the fabric pieces. Do you have any suggestions? So my method for cutting out fabric is, and interfacing is I usually cut out all my pieces from exterior and lining fabric. And then I use those cut fabric pieces to lay on top of the interfacing to cut either foam interfacing, shape flex, or whatever interfacing the project calls for. And then I just cut around. Um, if you're using acrylic templates, obviously you'll use your rotary cutter and the acrylic templates, but um, I just lay my fabric on top of the interfacing and cut around with scissors. Um, after fusing or basting the fabric to the interfacing, if there's a little bit of extra interfacing sticking out, I'll usually do a, a quick check with my pattern pieces to make sure which is correct, either the interfacing or the fabric, which is cut to the correct size. And then I'll trim the interfacing if I can uh, to the same size as the fabric, but I feel like that process generally gets me pretty close to having both near the same size. Um, Christina says, can you design a pattern that is a grab and go pouch that has a holder for a mini hand sanitizer, please? Um, I'm not sure if you mean like an extra holder, like a little pouch to hold the hand sanitizer, or you want a separate pocket for it. Uh, let me know maybe in a follow up in the comments, or you can always email me anytime with questions or recommendations in my email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. Um, Creative Mom of Three says, can I get your scraps and use them as a giveaway? You had multiple people ask for your scraps or use them as Ooh, giveaway that's items. That's a tough one. I don't currently have any and I'm not sure. I don't know. I guess I've been good at 
either, I don't know why I don't have any right now, um, but you can feel free to email me and maybe I'll, I don't wanna start a huge list, but maybe I can save a few emails and then um, when I have some scraps going, I can uh, send them out. Laura says, do you sell the frame for the cinema handbag and what type of glue did you use? Um, I like using, um, I think it was E6000, uh, the name is escaping me, sometimes that happens. Um, the shop that sells the metal frames for the silver, silver cinema handbag or the coin purse is um, while, while Baby Naps, I think was the website. It, the link should be in the product description, description for the silver cinema. Um, but they sell the frames in both those sizes for the bag and for the coin purse. Gail says, why does fusible fleece uh, make fabric look like it has cellulite or am I doing it wrong? Um, if you find that that's the case, if it looks a little wrinkly or bubbly after your project is finished, you can always in future first Let me fuse. say, how about don't fuse it and just sew in fleece instead? You could do that or you can also fuse a piece of shape flex to the wrong side of the fabric first and then follow that up with the fusible fleece. Um, either way, um, but definitely that shape flex will help smooth things out a little bit. Um, Glum says, if you're trying to choose between fleece and foam on a large project, make a little pouch with each and see what you prefer. That's a really great idea. Um, it's great to make samples uh, because everyone has their own personal preference. But if you make a quick little pouch sample, like Glum said, um, you could determine which you prefer better, which finish you prefer better. Um, and, you know, again, it might depend on the project, but doing testing of any kind like that, even sample swatches of fabric attached to interfacing, then you'll be able to see uh, how the interfacing looks when fused or attached to the fabric. Um, uh, I have mentioned in the past, but a little test that I've done is cut out a little, say, five inch square of fabric and five inch square of interfacing, fuse the interfacing to the fabric, crumple it up, which would simulate um, what a bag goes through when it's being pulled through the opening in the lining when you're about to finish the bag. Try to iron it flat and then see what you think about the results. If it looks nice and smooth, if it looks wrinkly, and then you can determine if you'd like to use that particular combination in future bags. Um, what kinds of batting will you use in your quilt? Um, sometimes I generally go with, um, if I'm having the quilt long armed, um, the batting that the long arm quilter recommends. I do have some in the basement right now. I do not remember the brand. I've used Warm and Natural before. I've used uh, pollen batting in both 100% cotton and wool. So through the years I've used all sorts and I'm not sure if I have a particular preference. It, it's really more or less fine with me. Um, Jane says, what is the name of the Christmas so long and where do we find it? So the designer is uh, Corinne Savi. Um, C-O-R-I-N-N-E, -N -N -E, and then her last name is S-O-V-E-Y. The quilt is called Christmas Cheer, and um, it was just released last week, and you can find it on her website. I think it was around $20, but it's a rather lengthy pattern with lots of different templates uh, for both applique options and foundation paper piecing, and there's traditional quilting built in. So um, it looks like a really fun quilt, and I'm excited to get started on it. Um, Diane says, question, bicycle bags have become popular recently. Have you thought about designing a bicycle bag? I do have that on my list, on my short list of patterns to get to soon-ish. Um, I haven't designed anything yet. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I could say about that. Um, Lisa says, have you ever used a serger for putting bag pieces together? I have not, but um, I'm not opposed to the idea. I do kind of like the idea of the serger, especially with the foam interfacing, kind of compressing it a little bit so you can get it through your sewing machine. Um, not that I find it difficult, but um, I can imagine the compressed foam might be a little bit easier, especially sewing around curves. But who knows, I have not tried it personally. Jennifer says, do you have a fa favorite bag to make? Um, I was thinking about this the other day. I really love making the- Cotton candy pouch. Cotton candy pouch is fun. I was thinking about the Coalition bag or the Zeppelin pouch because they have similar construction. I just like how everything comes together and there's minimal pieces uh, to cut out and put together, especially in the case of the pouch. Um, I really love making the Creative Maker Supply uh, case. I think I can make one in about two to three hours sewing time, not counting cutting time. And it's a really great gift. Uh, when my kids were little, I made them each one. Um, I've made, I've probably made that project uh, the most often if I'm thinking about all of my sewing patterns. Um, and it's just a really fun uh, project that you can multi uh, modify for your uses. 
It's not only good for sketchbooks or coloring books and all that. Um, you can use it for crochet hooks, knitting needles. Um, one time I had someone make a Creative Maker supply case for um, pick lock tools. Um, I, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but little metal lock tools. Picking tools. Lock picking tools. Thank you. So all sorts of things you can make that case to hold. Pamela says, can the selvage pouch be made without using the zipper tabs? If so, is there a hack for that? You can make that pouch without the zipper tabs, but then your the ends of the zipper will sort of... Uh, fall into the crack of the sides of the pouch. The zipper tabs just make it look nicer so that you have a clean um, side edge. Um, but you can, of course, uh, make it without the zipper tabs. Um, you'll just need to make sure when you're sewing the sides to sew over at least a little bit of the zipper um, because otherwise you'll have your uh, raw zipper tape showing. Um, Faye says, can you show the inside of the dot dot dash bag? I don't think I have any around i don't have any um have a lot of uh bag samples in the basement um but i'll try to bring it out for michelle uh, said in our facebook group there's a lot of um dot dot dash bags that you can see the insides oh okay i saw it was a thank you michelle yeah, yeah Faye, if you go into the soul sweetness facebook group and type in um dot dot dash bag it'll show you all the posts that people have posted with that particular project and um you can see other photos otherwise um i can share that on a future social sunday show Ingrid says, how long does it take you to design a pattern? Uh, the design process, I can be, depending on the particular bag, it can be fairly quick, maybe a day or two if I'm spending, you know, a major portion of that day working on the pattern. It depends on the bag. Some bags I have to make prototypes because they have pieces that fit together uh, really specifically, like the, just knocked a pouch over the upcoming bellow pouch pattern because as you can see the the pieces fit together very very exactly so these i made prototypes to check if my pieces and measurements were going to be working out um sometimes i can design a bag and i don't actually start sewing anything until uh, i start working through the pattern instructions so um my my most favorite part of designing sewing patterns is uh designing the pattern pieces on my computer and then also I enjoy very much uh, typing the instructions. So I usually do those things before I start sewing everything together. As I'm sewing, I'm um, writing down corrections for myself. So just because I've written in the pattern doesn't mean I'm good to go. Um, here's a pattern that I've been working on. And as you can see, like there's tons of, let me hold it up so you can see better. There's tons of like things scratched out, text on there. I think of... Um, They're going to play this back and pause it and zoom in what you're showing nothing, there. Like, I know what Sarah's next project no, is. No, there's nothing to be seen there. Um, most of the helpful hints that I have in my patterns, which um, are, you know, italic red text, usually that's from my notes from sewing the pattern together. So as I'm sewing, I think of tips to make things a little bit easier. And um, so a lot of the things that I've written down in my pattern as I'm working through will become a future helpful hint. Brenda says, do you have a tutorial to add a zip closure to a crossbody without a zip? Um, doesn't need to be recessed. Thank you. Um, I actually don't. I don't think I have. Um, I do have two videos on my YouTube channel for recessed zippers. One is for a bag with a side panel. And the second one is for a bag without a side panel, just because the construction will be a little bit different. Um, if you're planning on just putting a zipper at the top of the bag, you can, uh, in theory, make it similar to, uh, again, it depends on if there's a side panel or not. If there isn't, you can make it similar to uh, a zipper pouch with the tabs on either end. Um, which starch is good to use on white fabric? I don't want it to yellow. So I've used on white fabric before Best Press and um, Flatter Spray. Um, that's made by the company Soak. So both of those I've had success using. Um, currently on my ironing board I have Best Press. I like using the unscented varieties. Um, I used Flatter uh, in pineapple scent and plum scent before. Danny wasn't too crazy about the scents. They really bothered him. So I changed to using uh, unscented. But I highly recommend both of those sprays. Uh, Sonia says, now that Christmas is around the corner, have you ever thought of making a carrying case for a doll, sort of like a little soft suitcase. So I do have, um, in my first book, I have a little suitcase pattern, um, but also the Amethyst Project Bag. Uh, I recently got a few emails and I saw a post in the Facebook group of Amethyst, Amethyst Project Bags that people had made for dolls, Barbie dolls or other stuffed animals or soft dolls. Um, I have an Amethyst Project Bag behind me, let me grab it. 
So it's a pretty decent size. It can hold um, 12 and a half inch unfinished quilt blocks and you can just make room instead of um, space for pens and pencils. Um, I have a Polaris bag inside there too. Um, so this clip might be helpful to keep if you're making it to hold dowels because the, the clip can hold the dowels securely so they don't fall out. Um, but I did see, like I mentioned, I saw this successfully made for dowels and I thought it looked really cute um, with the dowels all placed inside. Michelle says, Sarah, have you ever considered doing a quilt sew along for your sew sweeties? I did over the summer. I love that little name right there, the sew sweeties. I do like that too. Uh, over the sum this past summer, I considered doing a free video quilt along, and I think I sometimes I get like a lot of ideas, and I want to do them because I'm really excited about them. And then I had to think about it, and then take a step back because I think it was a little bit uh, too much on my plate because I was working on new patterns at the time. We were still working on the new website, and I would still like to do that in the future. But I recognized uh, that. Uh, a smart choice would be to to not put so many things on my plate. So uh, for the time being, uh, we'll have that quilt along on hold. Kathy says, if I wanted to stockpile a stash of stabilizers, which ones and how much of each would you suggest? So uh, foam interfacing I use for just about every bag. Same with Pellant Shape Flex. Um, an alternative to Pellant Shape Flex, if you prefer, is uh, Woven Fuse, which is available wider. So Shape Flex is usually 20 inches wide. Woven Fuse, I think, is 45 inches wide, so you get a little bit more width, which might be a little bit more ec economical for cutting out pieces. Um, so those two for sure I always have on hand. I do use either Peltex or Decoville Heavy occasionally if I'm working on a bag that needs a, a stiff bottom. Um, but the first two for sure I always like to have in my stash. Um, just because I'm making a lot of, well, not a lot, but often making bags for patterns, I do buy those by the bolt. Um, and the Buy Any Soft and Stable comes by the bolt, uh, 58 inches wide. So um, there's a few different options. Uh, Pellon Flex Foam is available less wide. It's usually about 20 inches wide. Um, but again, um, those are also available by the bolt at either uh, Joanne Fabrics if you're in the United States or at your local fabric or quilt shop. How are you liking the system with the capital letters on uh, the fuse? It's, it's easier, for It's sure. easier? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, cool. Um, when using cork or vinyl, do you use any interfacing? So if it's for um, straps or accents, uh, I generally don't use interfacing for cork and vinyl. I just cut it raw. If I'm using the cork or vinyl for the body of the bag, I generally use the interfacing as called for in the pattern. Christina says, I was meaning a hand sanitizer holder sewn on the outside of a pouch, so an all-in-one type of grab-and-go. Oh, okay, so like maybe a slip pocket or zipper compartment, something like that. Um, I have not, but now that you mentioned it, I'm thinking of the Sloan travel bag, not necessarily that particular pattern, but it has like a three-dimensional pouch on the front. So maybe something like that might work for, um, your hand sanitizer, although that pouch is a little bit big for a sanitizer. Um, hmm, I'll have to think about that some more. Pam says, what cutting tools do you use for cutting out your fabric? I struggle with getting straight cuts. So you can always use your rotary cutter. Um, I prefer generally if I'm cutting out pieces for a, uh, a bag, unless it's a square or rectangle, I just use my scissors. Um, I use Kai scissors and the model number is 7205. Um, Susan says cellulite with fusible fleece means your iron is too hot. You need to lower the heat and not leave it on the fabric too long. Thank you so much for that, Susan. Um, Delva says when using Peltex and foam for a base, is it okay to do the foam first and then the Peltex? as Peltex wrinkles so much, you absolutely can. You can do the foam interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric and then leave the Peltex on the wrong side of the foam, for sure, definitely. It'll still give the same um, end results. Uh, it'll just be um, to your preference that way. Betty says, what would be a good serger to use for a beginner? So my first serger was the Brother 1034D serger. Um, it's a great serger. I think it was at the time this was a few years ago, but at the time it was around $150. So um, it's a really great introductory serger. And uh, I admit I was a limit, little in, intimidated by threading my first serger, but there's plenty of videos on YouTube that you can watch, including in slow motion to thread. And I remember because I, at the time I used my serger so infrequently, I would pull that video out whenever I went to use it and uh, it was totally fine. Um, 
No embarrassment about pulling out a video when you need it. Uh, Nikki says, do you store things in the display bags behind you? That's a great question. I actually... Sort of answered it when you opened that one and all of a sudden another pop popped out, right? I guess so. When I <laughs> We're a witness to it. <laughs> when I opened that Amethyst Project bag, this Polaris bag popped out. <laughs> um, I do have a lot of sample bags in the basement uh, with bags in bags in bags. When I used to lecture in person to quilt guilds, um, I would take two large suitcases, so two suitcases that you would uh, have to check in at the airport, two smaller suitcases. I would cram those things as full with bags as possible, and I had to, like I said, each bag would have maybe two or three bags inside it. And, th and then on top of that, I was probably carrying like 20 or 30 bags because they wouldn't fit in the suitcases. Do you remember that, Danny? The car trunk would be full, the whole entire car would be full of bags. The middle seat would have to be put down. So many bags and suitcases. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of bags down there in the basement. Sierra says, do you have a tag that you put on your quilts? I have made a couple this year and want to start putting personalized tags on. So um, the last couple of quilts that I made, I just wrote, I have to admit, I just wrote on the back with a fabric safe uh, permanent marker. Um, just my name, the date, um, I think that was it. I really like, I guess I got that idea from Tula Pink because I've seen her make similar markings on the back of her quilt with the marker, but I do like the idea of either purchase quilt labels or uh, printing your own quilt labels. Um, a few months ago, I did a review on Social Sunday about different fabrics that you could use to print out on your home printer. Uh, so I like all of those ideas. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure which I like the best. I guess by the time the quilt is finished, I'm a bit lazy and anxious to have it finished. So that's why I go with currently uh, the fabric safe marker on the back. Debbie says, do you prefer SF101 over Woven Fuse? Um, I've used both in the past. I find that um, they are both as successful and nice looking in the finished project and when fusing to the fabric. I still purchase uh, ShapeFlex SF 101 uh, by the bolt from my distributor just because we stock a lot of notions on the website and it's just easier for me to get from my distributor along with the rest of the notions that we sell. Meg says, what is the pink fabric used on the bag behind Danny? That is uh, Miramecco fabric. Um, I purchased it on Etsy. The flowers come in lots of different colors and sizes. Uh, let me actually, I have my ruler here, let me measure the size of the flowers on that particular one or maybe I can have you just lean over and measure a flower really quick. Mm, Can you? Nope. You are so <laughs> annoying. It gets me. <laughs> Sarah, I know what? Pulls off the shelf, knock them all down. <laughs> Each flower is... Approximate. Four inches okay. by four, three and a half by four. Okay, so if you're looking for that fabric on Etsy, uh, again, it's by Miramecco. If you'd like a similar size, you're looking for a four inch flower. Uh, Nancy says, have you ever taken your sewing machine projects on vacation? We are camping this weekend and I brought my 1950 Singer Featherweights. Um, have I ever, do you remember me ever taking my sewing machine on vacation? I don't think I have. Nope. Um, if I'm taking some sewing related work on vacation, I would take uh, English paper piecing or maybe cross stitch. Um, just to have some hand sewing. Um, yeah, I don't think... It, I do find it very interesting when I see photos uh, of people going to cabins and such and taking their sewing machine. That I can get on board with for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Diana says, Sarah, have you ever made a bag for Danny? I did make you a Creative Maker supply case with cork to mm -hmm. hold uh, at the time your Kindle. Tablet. Tablet. Is that the only thing I've made for you? I believe so. Yeah, I think so. Sounds about right. Cindy says, do you use something to keep the colors from running on a quilt or bag? I don't, but I've heard people that have used red fabric in a quilt use those, uh, I don't remember the brand, but uh, color catchers in the wash when they wash it for the first time. I haven't had a problem with colors running, but I don't often use red in my quilt, so maybe that's the reason. Um, how about a bingo bag? Um, people have asked about that in the past. I have seen a few people in the Facebook group make the jet set cinched bag from minikin season one into a bingo bag they added extra pockets on the outside i think they were mesh pockets to hold dabbers and i'm not sure what else um i think that's Probably a wand 
Oh, maybe. I think that's the only one I've seen that's been modified for that particular purpose, though. Kathy says, what model is your new Janome machine, please? It is the 6700P. Um, I did just... you read that off there from here? Yeah, I did. You can't read it from I here? need new glasses, definitely. Uh -huh. <laughs> My vision is, I can tell my vision's getting worse because it's reversing. Last time I went to the eye doctor, my optometrist said, as you get older, your vision actually gets better. So my um, prescription has been going down, but I can tell wearing my current prescription that it's getting better again because I can't see as well as I used to, but I can see over there. One thing I've noticed, I, holding the kids will come up and like they'll take their phone and they'll go like, Dad, you see this? And it's like relatively like this far from me. So I'm like, no, I can't see this. So <laughs> let me pull it back. And I'm thinking like, this reminds my, my parents when they'd get something to read or my, my buddy Tom, he would grab something from a menu and try reading it and then he's going further away. I'm like, why is he pulling further away? Probably because he can't focus on it. And I'm realizing that's starting to happen to me. Yeah, so. me too. Um, anyway, the Janome sewing machine, I liked that one because it was mostly metal like my Jugi sewing machines. I like, I like the metal sturdy sewing machine. Jennifer says, will you be offering fabric again? I love the fabrics you use, but the website is out. Um, website is out. Um, Probably like tulip pink fabrics, you know, actual cloth fabric. Uh, for the time being, we won't be stocking any quilting cottons just because uh, social distancing with our employee and we just don't have um, a lot of extra space for that. Um, I don't know. We may in future, but for the time being, um, unfortunately, no. But my favorite online fabric shops for quilting cotton are... Hawthorne Supply Company, Stash Fabrics, and um, Fat Quarter Shop. And also Etsy is a great place to go if you're looking for a specific fabric because lots of sellers are selling things, even things that are out of print. Um, P says, will you please reorder all of the rainbow hardware that is out of stock? Come on, please Sarah, get it you. already. Unfortunately, our hardware order has been sitting in FedEx in California for the last, hmm, I think we're going on six weeks. So if we could get it, Maybe we'll have to drive down there to get it. Uh, I don't know. but you know, I think Mirza's in California. Maybe you could send her <laughs> on a mission. I wish we could so we could restock that stuff. Gosh darn. <laughs> um, do you still use flatter spray when you iron? Does it make a big difference? I currently don't, don't use anything. I do because sometimes, depending on the fabric or how it's folded, sometimes just the iron and water by itself, I have a really hard time getting... Um, some wrinkles out and either the flatter spray or best press really helps with that. Also, if you're working on um, a quilt, especially with pieces cut on the bias, um, either of those sprays help a lot. So the fabric is not stretching and shifting um, while you're sewing or ironing because that can make a difference, a big difference with quilt blocks if they're stretched out, especially. Um, Kathleen says, I'm going through rotary cutters with very short use. Does the rotary cutting sharpening tool work well? I thought it did. Um, my cousin actually uses it for our 60 millimeter rotary cutters. Um, I actually, I don't have that tool because I only got one and he has it, but I just changed out my rotary blade this morning and I use the Olfa Endurance blades and I feel like they last a pretty long time. Um, yeah, I can't remember the last time I changed one. It's been hmm, maybe the beginning of the year or later, so um, love those blades too. Are you calling it on the question, yes, Stanley? All right, I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but we'll be get, be back again. So next Sunday will be our pre-recorded show, and then the Sunday after we'll be back live. Um, I will, let's see, I have a giveaway for you tonight, and that is six rolls of glitter vinyl. So all you have to do to be entered into the giveaway is answer my question in the comments wherever you watch the show, either on Facebook or YouTube. My question is, what is your favorite sport to watch? So just enter that, and I'll choose one randomly drawn winner at the end of the day this Saturday and announce that on... I'll draw the winner for next Sunday, but I'll announce the winner on uh, the following Sunday show since we won't be live next Sunday. What's what... your favorite? That beach to it? Anything with... Well, I do enjoy watching basketball. I love watching basketball and also anything with horses in it. What about you? Basketball and football are like... Back and forth. I love basketball. I'd say basketball is a little higher. I'm we're from Chicago. Chicago Bulls. Michael Jordan. Watch the Last Dance if you haven't seen it. Yeah. Uh, I think it just ingrained into my body, my soul is to stick with basketball. So. I feel like basketball is just so exciting to watch. Like Constantly with the scoring. Start to finish. I know a lot of people say hockey is exciting to watch. Uh, I agree with that, but uh, I don't know. It's just something about basketball, and I've been to a lot of 
well, several Chicago Bulls games over the years. So you know what's interesting about baseball? It may not be the most exciting to watch over long because there's you know there's breaks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But you, when you hear the announcers get into, I watch baseball for years with my brother. I mean, like every single day we had an opportunity to watch, we watched. But uh, it's still a passion in my heart. But baseball's up there too. I see a lot of people mention it. After I'd say, oh yeah, what are people saying? Oh, gymnastics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hockey. No people. What's the one where they they shoot the little puck across the ground? They sweep ahead of it. It's like a big stone. Curling like this. is that curling? curling. Oh, okay. I actually like watching curling too. I don't know if you guys have seen that before. Take a look at it. But I've watched it during the Olympics, and it's really actually fascinating. I would love to try it actually, but I'd be one of the guys like just flip to the side and fall <laughs> over. Like dang it, sweep, William, sweep. I think we're gonna end it on that, right? All right. Thank you everyone for joining us for for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week everyone, and happy yep. sewing. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye bye.